Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Midweek Supplemental. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, To Your Knife is back with two collaboration knives. I'll show off my newest precious. And we take a look at some custom knives on loan from some very generous and trusting friends. But first, as you know, I like to start the show with a little show off session uh, we call Pocket Check. So what am I carrying today? Glad you asked, I'll show you. I'm carrying my uh, Spyderco Spidey Chef. Now this knife, I got it and I liked it, uh, but it needed something. And I saw a random video from a fisherman down in Florida who had his uh, sharpened and pointed. And so I decided to do the same thing. And I had this customized by Mike Emler of Crazy Sharp. If you don't know Mike, he does a daily uh, live stream and, and he's been showing off his $10,000 knife collection recently, a pretty impressive collection. And uh, he does some great work. So I had him sharpen the tip of this point, I should say point the tip of this Spidey Chef and make it kind of a clip point. Um, and he also put this beautiful finish on the blade and then did his hand sharpening job, uh, a, a sort of technique that he learned while living for many years in Japan. And uh, it is really, really stinking sharp. I love it. Uh, he really, his work on this knife really resurrected my love of this knife, LC200N, totally waterproof knife here. And the other thing uh, he asked me, this was about a year ago now, if he wanted, uh, if I wanted him to retumble the titanium handles and freshen them up. And I said, no, because I love all the snail trails and, and uh, such that get worn into this kind of uh, treatment of the titanium. It's sort of uh, evocative of the, uh, of the way Sebenzas look after a while. Um, so I wanted to leave that sort of history in the handle here and make it, uh, you know, just kind of keep the character to it, especially considering the blade was getting a full uh, rework job. So I'm carrying this today because I'm expecting to eat steak later. And uh, this thing is a great knife for, um, as a steak knife. And I frequently uh, go to my larger GECs for that task. But for today, I don't know, I'm just feeling the Spidey Chef. So uh, this will be my steak destroyer not destroyer, my steak cleaver. It will cleave my steak and, uh, and you know, create little biteable morsels. All right, next, uh, the CRKT Pete. This is a favorite little, very light um, back pocket knife for me. This was a gift from Christine, Women Carry Knives. Great channel. You got to check out Women Carry Knives. Um, this is a um, Voxnez design. And really is emblematic of what I love about CRKT. Oh, look at that, schmutz, schmutz on the blade. I've used this recently and didn't clean it. I'm such a, such a renegade. Uh, anyway, this is what I love about CRKT. They bring such great design to, uh, to knife people like you and me who maybe don't wanna spend that much money on a, on a back pocket knife or someone who loves design but doesn't have, uh, you know, it doesn't want to throw down lots of cash on a knife. So they make really good knives in, in very adequate materials using incredible designers and incredible designs. So, I mean, CRKT will have my, my undying appreciation and uh, respect for, for that. You know, I don't love everything they put out. Who does, you know, who could, they do put out quite a bit, but uh, this CRKT Pete is bringing uh uh, Jesper Voxnez design to uh, to those of us who want to spend 30 bucks or 26 bucks or I can't remember what this uh, cost when it first came out but I love this knife and uh, it also has sentimental value because it was a gift so these are my two knives today and uh, I'm, I'm sticking to that <laughs> so very very happy now speaking about knives and collecting and uh, the collection and the way it expands and contracts it rarely contracts uh, but I made a purchase that you're going to see a little bit later on today. It was a surprise purchase, and I could not say no. But, uh, you know, it was not a 
not a an inexpensive knife and uh, i'll be showing it off later but uh when i bought it at, at, at the spur of the moment it was a, an opportunity and i had to take it at that moment i decided it would be responsible to make a little bit of a sacrifice sacrifice of course is uh that thing you do uh to ensure a better future that that little hit you take in the present to ensure a better future and for me it was a uh, you know almost immediate better future. It only took a, two, a few days to get the new purchase, the new knife. But I got rid of a couple of knives that uh, that I do love. And um, But it was all calculated. Okay, so I, I got, uh, I put up on Blade Forums uh, my ZT0055, the Gus Ciccini uh, Airborne um, custom model turned production model through zero tolerance. A great knife, uh, a great knife with a speckled past in, in my history, uh, collecting history, because I've tried to sell it before and it, it hadn't hadn't gone. And then I was resigned to keeping it. And this is a great knife to have. What am I doing trying to sell it? You know, I the emotions flip flop. But this time I, I decided to see if, if it would go. And it was the first of the three to go, which was a surprise because the other was a best tech malware. Um, and, and the third was the Ritter Hogue uh, uh, RSK1. Now, the reason I put those up is because I have another one and uh, the other RSK one I have, for instance, meant more to me because it was a gift from the great and powerful Doug Ritter. And uh, so I wanted to keep that one, get rid of the one that I actually bought myself. And I thought that was going to go first. Um, all three of them sold and all three of them combined made up the cost of the new knife that I got. Yes, I'm going to hold it. Hold off on telling you what it is. You probably know what it is if you watch the channel, though. It's a very exciting knife to have. Uh, but now, I got to say, it feels good when you finally make the decision to sell something and you sell it and it actually goes and you get money for it. It can be exciting and it can be like that feeling of, oh, I don't know, taking care of a, a job. Say you have a stack of papers in your office that you just, man, you don't want to get to it because it's going to be painful. Uh, filing them or deciding what to destroy or uh, for me i let envelopes stack up and then i have a big session where i go through my mail and um because everything all the bills all the important stuff that i'll get you know thrown out of the house or no electricity all that stuff is automated at this point so uh, i i'm pretty sure that in my mail there's not too much that's important though the irs and stuff there so that's probably why i stack it up uh, so getting rid of knives, selling off knives, making that decision can be like that. Once you do it and you realize, mm, I don't think I miss this knife that much. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have put it up for sale in the first place. It feels good. So now I'm on a feeling like I'm on a roll and I have one that I might. I know it would sell immediately, but I'm not sure if I'm going to. And uh, Jim, I didn't put this in the notes, but uh, I just might sell my uh, exclusive M4 Yojimbo. Uh, and this is not a sales pitch right here because I haven't decided because whenever I have it in hand, I'm like, I can't sell this. What am I, a fool? Uh, I love the combination. I love the Jade G10. I love M4 Steel. Um, but this may as well be 8CR13 MOV because I never used this knife. It's kind of a safe queen. And uh, it's Funny and odd to have a production knife as a safe queen, uh, some of you might think, but I don't know. I just don't want to sully this thing. So I'm on the I'm on the knife selling kick. I, I I might might do that. I might sell something else. It just it does feel good. I have to say. So I don't know. What do you think about it? Call our listener line seven two four four six six four four eight seven. Let me know if you've sold anything recently. Um, it, is this something that you labor over? Is this a is this a decision that's hard for you to make, or are you like one of these guys online that I just admire so much who don't get attached? It comes in. They might love it. They might love the knife. They might love the model, but they don't get attached. They just keep moving knives in and out. That I really admire. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's the collector in me, which I always thought was weird. I always thought I wasn't a collector until I took a look at how many knives I had and decided, yeah, maybe you're a collector, at least of knives. I've I've tried to keep it down to a minimum. Like I don't have a collection of crystal penguins around here. I don't have a collection of like commemorative spoons and plates from foreign countries or anything like that. It is just knives, but I don't know. Do you get attached? Let me know. 
uh, 724-466-4487. Let me know. All right. So that 724, yeah, 4664487. It almost sounded weird coming out. And then Jim floated up the graphic and I was correct. Memory's getting better, guys. Memory's getting better. Better with age. Let me just say that. Um, so yeah, let me know about selling knives. Um, but first, are you irrationally fond of knives? Are you crazy about this show? I, I bet you are. Uh, you can support it by going to Patreon. There are three levels of support. You get all sorts of freebies, stickers, a mention on the podcast, early access to the Sunday interview show and the midweek supplemental. That's this show. And, uh, on those, you don't get any ads. So it's, it's, uh, pretty good deal because I know uh, YouTube just piles them on and they they come in the middle of the show and at the end of the show, you don't get any of that. Your support helps fund the show and the infrastructure and uh, the apps and equipment and also help us get some new knives coming in here. So I have uh, new content for you uh, all the time. So check us out on Patreon and seeing what becoming a member can get for you. The quickest way to go there is by going to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So To Your Knife is back. To Your Knife, we heard they came on strong a couple of years back with the Bruiser and a couple of other knives. Uh, I never actually had one in hand, uh, but they were impressive in their material choices for the money and the design. I, I thought the Bruiser was a pretty cool knife, a clip point, a big sort of clip point folder. Well, they are back, and this time with the help of some custom knife makers slash designers. Um, and it's good to see them back, got to say. Uh, the first one is interesting. It's the Moss. It comes from a Dutch high-end maker, uh, Martin Anag Anagam, I think it is. Uh, if you go to his... Uh, Instagram page, you'll see some really, really um, intricate, in, intricately made um, folders with beautiful materials. And so they've gone ahead and made a sort of a gentleman's spear point. It's about 2.6 inches, M390 steel. We love to hear that. That alphanumeric combination sells knives for sure. And uh, it's also, you know, we know if that the, that if the um, heat treat is correct, it is an amazing, amazing uh, knife, if the heat treat is correct. Uh, that was a topic of conversation on last week's Thursday Night Knives. Just because it's got the numbers M390 doesn't mean it's necessarily good. In any case, uh, this is one of those double detent uh, knives. So it's kind of slip jointy, kind of modern, but it does not uh, have a full on lock to hold it open. And uh, uh, it's one of going to be one of the premium things coming out of uh, coming out of Tuya this year, and it's got uh, some beautiful desert ironwood scales, and um, you also have uh, titanium liners there, so it'll be nice and light. Uh, I think it's a nice looking knife. Uh, I I do like wood on knives, but I'm I'm a little fussy about it. Uh, they have to be kind of traditionally traditional ish, and uh, so it works on this. The one that I'm really excited about is coming out by Alessandra DeSantis. She's an Italian uh, knife designer, and it's uh, it's a pretty cool looking karambit, fixed blade karambit coming out from them. And Alessandra DeSantis, I've been seeing her on her Instagram page. She's been um, showing this one off a lot recently. And I wasn't aware that it was coming out through Tuya. I, I think she's been showing off her custom versions of it, um, a beautiful, uh, Karambit called the Aswang, Aswang, I'm going with Aswang, A-S-W-A-N-G, uh, which is some sort of uh, Southeast Asian um, demon, Aswang. I I'm not sure if it's Filipino or, or um, Malaysian. You can let me know in the comments uh, when you tell me I don't do proper research. Uh, let me know where that demon comes from. <laughs> but it's a two and a half inch hawkbill, you know, um, uh, karambit setup and the ring is cool it's uh, instead of a purely circular ring it's an octagon octagonal ring and we know the octagon as being a well besides the stop sign it's it's got a combative history remember that uh, chuck norris movie the octagon and then of course the ufc uh they fight in an octagon so it's a it's a fitting shape other than a circle to be uh a ring on a karambit plus with the eight sides 
you're not going to feel the transition from side to side as much if you spin it as you would with, say, a pentagon, which would also be sort of combative for obvious reasons, or a hexagon. So, yeah, I like this thing. I think it's a really cool design. I really like Alessandra DeSantis's designs. Um, I've never had one in hand, but I love that we have a, a woman tactical knife designer. I mean, she's all about the tactical knives. You should give her a follow on Instagram. Uh, she makes some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, she's had a few knives out through uh, Riyadh and we uh, in the recent past. And um, now I'm re not remembering which one of those companies, but uh, cool folders, also cool fixed blades. This one is in D2 with G10 and you can take the, uh, take the scales off. They're bolted on there. You can take them off and it'll still fit the Kydex and it'll lighten it up a little bit. Six, uh, 6.8 ounces uh, in total with the sheath. So exciting things coming from Tuya Knife. I'm glad to see that they're back. It kind of seemed like they were on a little bit of a hiatus. I just wasn't hearing much about them for a little while. So glad to see them back. Also glad to see them uh, bringing in some designers from the outer outside world. Next up in Life Knife News, we have a Dylan Mallory design. Dylan Mallory has been uh, doing a lot of things in the last couple of years with artists and cutlery, these beautiful, sleek uh, designs folding designs. Well, this one, the Silax, is a fixed blade. And to me, it looks like a sax. And I love the sax or the scramma sax uh, style of blade. Um, kind of worn cliffy in, in, the, uh, in the way the, the spine breaks down to the, the edge, but not a worn cliff in that there's a, a bit of a curve here. Now, this is a 5.11 inch, um, 5.1 inch blade. And to me, and to many, it looks, it sort of straddles the kitchen knife, camp knife um, uh, barrier there. And that's really appealing to me. I could see this in my kitchen, um, going to work on vegetables, but also it's a thick enough blade that you could have it out in the camp. Also, it would look kind of cool, scout carry uh, on the back, uh, you know, as a weapon, I gotta say. I'll just say it right there. Interesting thing about this is that they're moving this from the artisan line, uh, from a higher end line to the CJRB label as well, because it's done so well, people have been liking it. And this will be the first fixed blade in the CJRB line. It comes with a Kydex sheath. And originally it was in the uh, AR, ARRPM9 uh, proprietary artisan steel. Uh, and we like that steel apparently. Well, according to Mike Emler, it's an awesome steel and, and, uh, he should know he's got a knife with them. The, um, he's got a few knives with them in that steel and, uh, fully approves. And, uh, well, so do I then. So I'm looking forward to this. It's not much of a change from artisan to CJRB, just the logo and, uh, the, the termination of the handle into the blade that area um right up front looks to me a little bit more um elegant it it looks more like a um, finger choil and a and a kitchen knife there than it does uh with the artisan but that's just a splitting hair sort of detail should be a cool thing dylan mallory is burning it up i love to see young designers uh successfully making great knives with uh with great companies so there you have it. That's the new one from CJRB and Dylan Mallory, um, the Silax. And lastly, in Knife Life News, another exciting thing from Lion Steel Knives. Uh, they have a new series called the Jack Series. Guess what kind of knives they are? Yes, you've got that right. They are Jack Knives, but these are multi-purpose models. They've got three of them. And I guess technically it's two multi-purpose ones. Uh, in the picture you're looking at right here from Knife uh, from uh, Knife News, the one right up front is a single bladed jack. Beautiful. I mean, this is just slightly, these blades are just slightly north of three inches. So that's a good size. That's a pretty damn good size for a um, folder, uh, for a um, slip joint. Usually slip joints tend to be a little bit smaller. Uh, these are sort of in that uh, line they've had out recently that, that um, has the the best man and the others. Um, M390 blade steel, fully take apartable, disassemblable, um, I think is what you would say. 
which is also rare for a slip joint knife. But uh, as you move up in the uh, line, you see that uh, you can get the same clip point blade with a cap lifter slash uh, flat head screwdriver. And then there is a third one that has the cap lifter slash screwdriver, the blade. And then on the flip side, it's got a corkscrew. That's probably the one I would get because, uh, you know, it just seems to make the most sense. Um, if you're, you want to be able to open beers, you know, for your friends and then wine also. So, I mean, why not? Why not just get the three, the three function jackknife there? So this is the Jack series from Lion Steel out of Italy. And, uh, not for nothing, but they use a, the nail nick is called a French cut nail nick. I'm not exactly sure what that means other than, you know, kind of squarish, uh, sort of like a long pole, except it's short, <laughs> but it's not, it doesn't have that crescent shape uh, that we're used to seeing. So it, it's got a nice look. I really like these lion steels. They make good looking knives and, uh, uh well, the quality is there for sure. And I know that through some of the um, more tactical lion steels I've had. So exciting stuff from lion steel, the three multi-use models that you can take apart and have premium materials like M390 steel, and then their usual uh, handle covers, wood and uh, micarta. So definitely check that out. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie Midweek Supplemental, uh, we take a look at the new knives in my collection, and then we take a look at some beautiful custom knives on loan from some very generous friends out there. Thank you for entrusting me with your beautiful custom knives. But before we dig into that, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell. That'll let you know, theoretically, every time we upload a new video here. Also, join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. That's our weekly live stream right here, where you have the opportunity to join in on the conversation on screen, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube. You can also... Um, just comment if you don't want to come on screen, but we get lively conversations and it is a lot of fun. Uh, so let your voice be heard on Thursday Night Knives. That's every Thursday right at, here at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's Thursday Night Knives right here, 10 p.m. Eastern. Knife Junkie Channel and save money on a new knife at the same time. Then check out our knives for sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife deals on lots of great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and we make a small commission. It's a win-win. So what are you waiting for? Check out the knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You'll be glad you did. Okay, I was alluding to this earlier when I was talking about selling knives, but man alive, did I get the coolest knife. Uh, and I'm very, very lucky to get it. Our good friend Lavender Pants 86 sent me a text, an urgent text. Bob, check this out. He lives in Ohio. There's a place called River's Edge Cutlery in Ohio. And uh, well, they had a couple of these, and I'm going to show it off right now. Oh, yeah. I finally have myself a Demco AD20. This is a machine ground blade of 20 CV steel, um, G10, you know, all the usual things that you're going to expect on this knife. But I know now having it in hand, it is way more than the sum of its parts. This is an incredible knife, incredible knife. And I am so blessed and happy to have it. And you don't hear me say blessed too often. Uh, I, I'm blessed in my family. I am blessed that I have a job and and am fulfilled. Um, you know, blessings are are not things we should take lightly. So maybe I shouldn't say that. This is just a material thing. But I, I guess I'm, I should say I'm blessed to have friends out there who alert me to such great things. Um, and this is one of them. I'm going to stop right there and just show you this knife. It's got the shark lock, which incidentally, and I don't mean to be, uh, you know, high handed about it, but he did announce this shark lock on the first interview we had with him on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, it, that and 250 will get me a cup of coffee, but still, I just think it's kind of cool. The shark lock is a very strong new 
innovative lock from him. And this is the only knife that it appears on thus far. And uh, it works like a wedge. When you pull this back, you can see it kind of dips down ever so slightly and it removes tension from the tang of the blade. It's, it's a wedge-like tension and uh, it allows you to just drop it down. You can open it with the, uh, with the lock or without the lock. And uh, well, you know how the AD20 works because everyone else in the, in the uh, collecting slash video universe has pretty much shown theirs off or shown one off uh, on loan. But I, I just wanna show you a couple of these details. First of all, I love the clip point blade. It's a 3.6 inch clip point blade of 20 CV steel. 20 CV has held me in good stead um, over the past couple of years. Uh, I have a lot, uh, a few um, uh, ZTs in that kind of steel and uh, some other things. Uh, but look at how thick that blade is. It's a beautiful, thick, fat stock here that comes to, you know, it's saber ground and it comes to a screaming, screaming edge. I mean, that's going to be one of the things you get when you have a knife that gets so much personal attention from the maker. It's a machine ground blade, meaning the blade comes to him already like this. You know, he sends the design out. Uh, it gets cut out and the bevel is put on, but he does all the finishing work. He and his brother John do all the finishing work and put on the edge. And that edge is incredible. Incredible. Here's a cool little detail. Uh, you can you can barely see on the blade tang. Well, let me stop the camera from shaking. You can barely see it's just scrawled in there. Twenty CV. It's, you, know, you can't really see it. All right. So you've got this incredible jimping all the way up to to the clip. You know where the, where the blade spine breaks towards the tip, and uh, you just get great purchase there uh, when you have your thumb on the back of the blade, and then you have the shark lock, which has a different style of jimping on it on the back so in a saber grip it's like a thumb ramp uh, when i first saw this uh, frankly i thought that this shark lock would get in the way in some grip but i haven't come up with the grip yet where it gets in the way say i'm using this choil and i choke way up you don't feel it uh, when i'm back in this natural position with the thumb on the back of the blade you don't feel it uh, you only use it to your benefit when it's in a saber grip in a reverse grip, you don't feel it. So this protruding from the top, I thought was going to be a problem like it has been with uh, secondary locks on some knives. And uh, it just isn't. It is just pure gold. This Andrew Demko, man, what what a what an innovator. Very comfortable handle. I love this red G10. It's, it's tending towards maroon. And I really like that. I'm not crazy about bright red G10, uh, but I love maroon, burgundy. Reminds me of wine. Uh, look at these giant fat standoffs. Quite, quite, uh, quite nice. And then the only liners in here are to support the lock. So it keeps the knife in a reasonable uh, weight category. You can, if you can see this here, uh, there are no liners, just what you need to support the lock. And then, uh, and then before I put this down and move on, uh, I just have to comment on how awesome these thumb studs are and then the pivot so classy love it so this pivot on the uh show side says demco knives around it which i i really like and then when you flip it to the side uh to the clip side it says wampum pa so that's where he lives and makes these amazing knives and uh, i just want to thank lavender pants again for uh for giving me the heads up on this and for facilitating uh, the sale and for getting this in my hands. Um, very grateful. And I'm so, so very happy to have this uh, AD20. And it was worth sacrificing the other knives that I also really, really like to get it. So I'm going to try and be doing this more often, making sacrifices to get even finer knives in hand. So very excited about that. Speaking of very, very fine knives, uh, I have I have this one that uh, I'm very excited. I'm going to be speaking with the makers of this uh, coming up here very soon. This is the Tactile Knives Rockwall. Tactile Knives is a new company born out of an older company. This is the um, the same people who make Tactile Turn 
pens have turned their attention uh, that was, see what I did there with the language? It's pretty sophisticated. Uh, turned their attention to making knives, and this is their first model, and it's really awesome. So this is a three-inch bladed knife. Here, I'll put it down here so you can, you can kind of gauge the size of it. Three-inch bladed knife, saber ground, uh, XHP steel. You've got a really intri intricately um, milled out handle here made of titanium. Uh, this is evocative of their pens, which come with very fine um, textures milled in them. And uh, it's, it feels so good in the hand. As a matter of fact, uh, so this past weekend, this was my impromptu steak knife. Um, as mentioned, I'm going to be having more steak tonight and that will be the Spidey Chef. But this past weekend, uh, we were invited to neighbor's house and he called it meat a palooza. He, he made lamb lollipops. He made a big steak and then he made some bulgogi and then some chicken wings. And this is, you know, great, great people, but, but they were supplying plastic silverware and I cannot cut fine, fine meat with plastic silverware. So this was the knife I had on me and it was amazing uh, as a steak knife. It's very, very, very sharp. But uh, some more quick details about this. If you look closely, you can see that it's milled out. The handles are milled out to reduce some of the weight of this titanium. And it is a liner lock, which is very, very, well, it's, I want to say it's very refreshing, but it's refreshing. And I got to say, practically speaking, very handy because on a knife this slender and small, um, I tend to... Uh, by, you know, by no effort of my own, depress the lock bar and make it more difficult on myself to extract the blade using the flipper. So I really appreciate that they went with a liner lock on this. Um, it's just a very pleasant deployment experience and then a very pleasant closing experience as well. Um, now, the the pocket clip here is quite evocative of a pen clip. They um, Let's just say when they entered the knife game, they were ahead on the clip game <laughs> because they've, they're used to making them for their knives. Um, tactile knives, rock wall. I'm very impressed with this thing and uh, really happy to have it, feel honored to have it uh, because they are, uh, there is a long waiting list for this right now. And um, I happen to be one of the people that has it in hand. So I'm, I'm grateful about that. Um, also, you can see me worrying over the jimping with my thumb. The jimping is, is excellent on this knife and uh, jimping matters. So I'm going to, I'm going to close this knife and move on, but definitely check out tactile, tactile turn knives. I, I know a lot of people love them. Jake Bearded Gear has been showing off his uh, tactile rock wall knife with his tactile pen. And uh, since I am a bit of a pen junkie too, though, nah, I want to say junkie, I'll say pen tourist. I, I, I come in and out of of the pen thing. I'm definitely checking out one of their, one of their pens soon. Uh, keep hitting the mic if that's what you're hearing. So very excited about that. Uh, great steak knife there. Okay. Next is the cold steel tie light. Chris, a knife that I have mixed emotions about, uh, as you know, if you've uh, seen this channel at all, I love the big cold steel knives. And this, when this came out, this is a signature, um, Lynn Thompson signature large tie light, you know, XL with the Chris blade. Uh, 2020, they introduced Chris style blades to the tie light series with this one and uh, to the Voyager series. And I'm a, I love Chris knives. There's one right there on my wall behind me. Uh, Chris blades are amazing and very hard to, uh, relatively speaking, hard to make, hard to sharpen, hard to forge. They present, uh, you know, a number of issues, especially if you're going to mass produce them in a um, in a factory setting, especially to get an even nice edge. And they did it beautifully here on the Signature Series XL tie light. So when they came out with this one, the smaller version, uh, I jumped on it. Now, well, not on the knife, on the opportunity. Uh, so I have mixed emotions about this, I, as I said, uh, for two reasons. One, it's nearly impossible to get out. Like, I can't get it out with the thumb stud. And uh, sometimes with the tie light, you can press the little flipper, give it some wrist, and I can't do that either. So 
I need to use this quillion and it's painful. <laughs> the uh, detent is just absurdly strong on this. So I might, might work on that if I decide to keep this knife. The other thing I might work on is the handle. But before I get to the negatives, let me talk about the positives here. And that would be this blade. It's AUS 10A, AUS 10A. They do a great job with their AUS. They do a great job with all of their steels. And uh, I have a feeling this is no exception. They did a, a fantastic job in shaping this blade and uh, putting an edge on it. It's perfect, perfect edge. Doesn't, doesn't widen and thin and widen and thin. It's just, they did a great job. The blade is amazing on this new four inch tie light, Chris. What's not amazing is the detent. Like I said, it's just way too much. And I know cold steel is into delivering way too much and that usually works to their benefit. In this case, not so much. The other thing is the handle just feels cheaper than usual. Um, I'm not sure what it is. Well, I, I am sure what it is. One is, you know, all of this, uh, the liner and the scale on the spine of the knife, it's it, none of it's hafted or smooth. It's all, you know, you can feel every different level, like this is higher than this. Uh, the right-hand side, the clip side scale is higher than the clip side liner, which is all higher than the uh, backspacer in the middle. And just this just feels kind of cheap. And then you look at it, you can see the screws have have created the screws that hold the whole thing together, you can just kind of see them popping up through the through the liner and the uh, the backspacer, I mean, and this GRN. Now, I'm not sure if that's because the GRN, the grivery here is a little bit translucent. And so you can see this, the screws through there, or if in drilling through it, it raised it up ever so slightly and, and, and you can see it. I mean, you can, you can actually feel it. So I'm I'm a little bit at, at odds with this knife because I really want to love it because of the unique and and perfectly I have to say executed blade, but I'm turned off by the 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 very poorly calibrated um, detent. You know, it's just ridiculously hard to get the blade out and the handle. So I either may um, you know move it along or try my hand at making uh, scales for it. I have some Python micarta that's just been sitting around in light scales. I, I might try. I know there are a lot of issues that come up when you're trying to make scales that I'm not thinking of, i.e. countersinking the screws and then dealing with the screw lengths and everything if you don't get the exact um, size thickness um, micarta to, to fit over this. I, you know, I know that it will present all sorts of challenges that I might not uh, be <laughs> interested in spending time on, but I really want to keep this blade because I love the blade. So the new tie light four inch, eh, not so sure about it. And, um, you know, when I, I sent a picture to my brother, when I got it, he's a cold steel, uh, super fan as well. And he's like, yeah, cold steel that they, they're not losing there. They haven't lost anything, you know? Uh, and he was alluding to the sale, uh, of the company to GSM. And I thought, well, I applaud that they came out with this knife and I applaud that they're coming out with the Talwar and they've had some real interesting things coming out. But I'm, I'm wondering about, you know, is, is, this, is this detent and this kind of cheesy handle uh, treatment, is this a fluke on my knife in particular or are there shortcuts happening that is leading to this or, or what? So I don't know. I'm not so sure. But... Uh, for now, I'm going to keep, I'm going to hold on to this tie light four inch, uh, Chris, and decide whether or not I want to turn it into, you know, my own customized version, just using, holding on to the blade and the clip and that kind of thing. So there you have it. That's a new one. Love it. Here's another new one that I'm also going to compare to a cold steel. Uh, you may have seen the video I put up on this. I was very excited when it came in. And this will be the Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife. So I'm not carrying it because I don't want to scratch up the clip or anything. Mm. Excuse me. And that is the Kershaw Strata XL. This is a modern day take on the um, classic Spanish Navaja. 
the knife that was uh, sort of born, the folding knife that was born out of a uh, moratorium on swords. Spanish citizens were no longer allowed to carry swords, so they said, fine, we'll just make these giant uh, folding knives and fight with those instead. And uh, that's the <laughs> that's the very quick and dirty on the on the history of the Navaja. But it's a knife that I've always just been uh, over the moon about, um, whether it's the traditional version or the various cold steel versions that have come out uh, in the Espada series. Well, this is Kershaw finally someone uh, giving some competition to cold steel in this XL size format. Uh, you can see this is a five and a half inch blade of D2. Uh, it's sort of a um, medium tumbled D2 and uh, G10 handle scales. Now you've got, well, G10 on this side, nicely sculpted. You have sort of a stylized handle shape. Uh, to me, it's evocative of the Navaja in its shape, but it looks a little art deco to me. I mentioned in the video, this reminds me, this, this uh, is that copper? Copper piece. Uh, reminds me a bit of like a an Art Deco Miami hotel. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, it's got kind of an Art Deco vibe to it. Um, and on the other side, you have a very thin steel uh, liner lock. And I mean, um, frame lock, I'm sorry. And the beauty of this is that it is steel, but it is so light. So it's 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 a quite thin handle already, both sides, both scales are uh, very thin. And then if you look in here on the on the lock side, they really went to great lengths to mill and pocket out um, some steel here so that it would stay light, you know? It, it's a big knife and it carries like nothing. I carried it one day and the thinness of it and the lightness of it, I really, really have to say, it was not like carrying a five and a half inch bladed folder. It it carries like something much lighter. Now they also do a four and a half inch bladed version of this or four and a quarter inch bladed version of this, which um, might be more, even more uh, pocketable and pocket friendly. Uh, you might need deep pockets to, to actually carry this thing. And I mean that literally, not figuratively, but the shorter version, obviously uh, not as much. So let me show you a cool detail here. By the way, it's on it's on ball bearings, so it pops out with aplomb and enthusiasm. But let me show you here. If you look at the let's, we'll look at the dorsal side of it at the very end where the clip is. It's a deep carry pocket clip. It loops over and is attached on the inside of the frame lock steel side. And if you look closely, you'll see that the scale on the other the G10 on the show side is just long enough to accommodate the height of the loop over of the clip so that the handle sides are of unequal length by about an eighth of an inch or so. And to me, that is a detail that is uh, just shows that they care. It's a really cool detail because I don't like when uh, loop over pocket clips that aren't attached to the side of the, the knife but come out of the top are are stand proud of the of the whole pommel itself, and in this case, they they uh, they took special care to make sure that that wasn't the case. You can see it's got uh, two standoffs here that are hex two yeah two uh, standoffs here that are hexagonal and round um, in turn, and uh, adding another little classy flourish, perfectly centered. I mean, this is a really nice knife. You can tell that they spent. Uh, special attention on this on this series. Uh, the 2021 releases uh, by Kershaw to me have been mm, overdone. Uh, they're just over designed, too many notes. Uh, but on this one, I think they hit a really, a really nice um, sort of medium with the all the sort of milling on the G10 and this copper flourish and and the overall shape. I think it works. I think some of their recent releases, just have too much. Uh, before I put this away, I'd be remiss if I didn't compare it to a large cold steel. So instead of a, an Espada, which I used to show it off in the, um, or to compare it to in the in the tabletop video, I'll show it off with the XL Recon 1 uh, in clip point. You can see that this one has a longer handle and a shorter blade. 
So they really maximize the blade to handle ratio here in the Kershaw. Uh, when I look at this uh, next to the, the cold steel, I can really see that A, the cold steel doesn't quite reach five and a half inches and, uh, and the handle is, is pretty long. Now, I mean, I would trust the Recon 1 uh, for, for any sort of real work more than I would this. This is kind of a gentleman's fighting knife, I gotta say. Uh, the the Kershaw is. You could wear this easily with a tux and it would disappear in the pocket. And, um, you know, it's got a short clip and everything. It would disappear in the pocket. You wouldn't feel it even in light slacks or, or a tuxedo. And then you could pull it out when someone offends your honor and, and fight with it. The Recon 1 would would be a little, little uh, heavier and a little harder to carry in that situation. But, uh, but I would trust it more with that lock and such in a pinch. So there you have it. That's the Kershaw Strata XL. Uh, very happy to see them come out with that knife and um, enter the XL folding market. Last one I'm going to show uh, just very briefly. This is from the pass around group that uh, um, a Therapeutic Edge, I mentioned his wife earlier, uh, uh, women carry knives. Therapeutic Edge has a pass around group that I'm a part of. And uh, I wanted to see this knife. This is the VDK Vesta. And to me, it's a, it's a face that only a mother could love. I, I find it to be an unattractive knife, but I wanted to check it out uh, because people that I trust were really loving it. And once I got in hand, I, I understand it, it, it is very ergonomic sound. It feels really good in hand, and it's a great blade. Uh, Vlad Domagirov is a is the designer of VDK knives, and um, he has them made. I know he's had a, a number of his knives made through Wii. I don't think this is made by Wii. This might be, well, I don't know who it is. I don't want to speculate. But if I were to speculate, I'd say Best Tech, maybe. Um, but uh, this is D2 Steel, and I love the color combination of the raw or JG10 with black. Love the way that looks. If you look in here, you can see how really nicely they've uh, pocketed out the liners. Just, just what you need there to hold this thing together and nothing extra. Keeping this large knife, this is a large knife, it's about a four inch blade, keeping it nice and light. Um, I say it's a face only a mother could love. I could see how people could love this design. It is definitely unique. The blade to me looks like one of those crested dinosaurs. Uh, you know, I, I just don't like this opening hole area. I, uh, purely aesthetically speaking, I don't like it because when I get it in hand, I understand. The thumb nestles right in there and uh, keeps the point kind of at center line. And, you know, it's a great, great feeling knife. And I have no doubt it would perform as well as you would expect a uh, a knife with a tip like this and 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 all that. So mixed emotions about the Vesta, but uh, I'm glad I've had a chance to check it out. Great action, a uh, low low profile flipper there. And I believe these are still available. He uh, he meaning Vlad has made versions of this with uh, more exotic steels uh, and different handle materials and such. But I think this is the baseline version and. Uh, it's interesting. All right, I'll leave it there for the Vesta. So I wanted to show off a, uh, three, no, four custom knives that are on loan to me that have blown me away. They're just uh, from three different makers, uh, one of whom has been on this show and we've spoken to, um, I think twice, uh, Ian Pekarski of CMF Metalworks. Yes, I know twice he's been on the show. Uh, great guy, young guy, and uh, making just incredible folders. Well, uh, after our last conversation, I was commenting on how I really like his Daedalus model. Daedalus, the father of Icarus. I just so happen to know that. Excuse me, I had to take a sip of steaming hot coffee. And uh, this thing is amazing, so I'm just going to show it. <laughs> So he was, he had this Daedalus model in for spa work, you know, uh, the, the owner just wanted it cleaned up and maybe resharpened and just um, babied by the maker. And they both agreed very generously to send it to me before it went back to its owner. And 
Ugh. I'm just stunned by how gorgeous it is. Before I open it, I want to take a look at this titanium handle and this beautiful orange peel finish. I think this is the first knife I've ever handled in person with orange peel finish. And uh, I really like it. If you look at it, it's like all these little micro dimples on it. And it doesn't, I wouldn't say it adds to grip. Well, maybe it adds to grip a little bit, but it's aesthetically speaking, it's just um, a beautiful thing. So actually, before I open it, I will turn it to its dorsal side and show you this beautiful floating Timascus backspacer. Look at that. Here. If you can't see it right now because my hands are shaking and moving around or because you're listening, it is a floating backspacer made of Timascus. It's like cross cut uh, from this vantage point. And it's got three pins holding it there, just perfectly parallel to the handle scales. And then it terminates with a with a um, asymmetric cut there, asymmetrical cut there. And then looking at it next to the Timascus clip, it's just just a thing of beauty. This is a work of art. I know I oh, oh hidden hardware holding the clip on. I know I go back and forth about my definition of art. To me, definition my definition of art is something that can only be appreciated, not used. And if it is used, it's used only for appreciation. This, of course, is a tool, so it's not art, but it is treated like a work of art. I don't know how else to put it. So look at this design uh, design detail uh, that Ian, Ian has sort of created. It's a tiny flipper. It's like a flipper that's barely there, but it's jimped here so you can you can flip it open and it flips open on bearings and just flies out. Just beautiful. Now, the thing that really gets me about this knife, if it feels great in hand, it's so ergonomically uh, pleasing. But the thing that gets me the most is this incredible blade. I love the shape of this blade, first of all. It's got a recurve and a big belly and uh, an arched back. But this here, this is stainless steel Chad Nichols Damascus, and the pattern is called the virus pattern. And it is stunning. It is, I mean, it's just amazing to look at. Now, if you look at it in cross section, Ian has ground this thing, it's a hollow grind, to an extremely thin edge. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. You pinch it up here at the shoulder and move your fingers downward, and it's like it disappears between your fingers by the time you get to the edge. Very, very impressed with this. I always liked Ian's work from looking at it and from talking about it with him and seeing it in videos, but having it in hand is a really special experience. And I'm, I'm very grateful to him and uh, especially to his client who agreed to have this come through my hands before it returns to him. As you can see, just from touching it and holding it, uh, there's a little bit of my oil on the titanium here, my hand oil. I will uh, Windex that off. I did a little research on Thursday Night Knives and found out from some gents classier than myself how to clean titanium, and uh, that's what I'll be doing with that. Look at this clip. If you can't see it, it is a stunningly beautiful Timascus clip. Even the inside of these scales are treated with, with care. Just a beautiful knife. Thank you, Ian, and thank you to your client for letting me see this thing, let, letting me keep it in hand. Um, I have not held it over anything but, but this cutting mat or something soft because I'm so worried about dropping it if I drop this thing. First of all, it couldn't be replaced because it's one of a kind, but also I would imagine it's not inexpensive. So, and and it would be heartbreaking to the guy, you know. Sorry, thanks for letting me borrow your. Here's here's the pieces of your knives, or here's your knife, and here's the extra piece. <laughs> here's the tip, because that's what I do. I break tips. But let me let me just show this one more time before I put it away, because once I put it away, uh, I'm going to do one close up video of it, and then I have to send it send it along. What a beautiful, beautiful knife. All right, all right. 
I will escape into reverie if I don't put it away and move on. So check out uh, Ian Pekarski, CMF Metalworks on Instagram. His stuff is just gorgeous, and he's got a number of different models. Okay, next up are two knives on loan to me uh, from Tier 1 Gear Reviews, another good friend of the show. Uh, thank you, Justin. Greatly appreciated. These first two are from a knife maker named Ron Steele Jr., or just Ron Steele. What a great name, by the way, for a guy making knives. He's a graphic designer, and uh, this is, I don't think this is his main gig, but it could and should be because look at these two knives. Two fixed blade knives. They kind of go together, and I'm going to show you this one first. So this is his model called the Prime, and it, to me, is a really interesting blade shape. It's a, this drop point with a slight, that's not a recurve, but the angle that the, that the cutting edge um, descends at ever so slightly from the handle kind of essentially acts as a recurve. Um, I love this design. I love this handle treatment. It's fat carbon and titanium, or uh, fat carbon and um, micarta here. These bolsters are fat carbon with the liners. Just beautiful work. It feels great in the hand. And uh, Justin, uh, Tier 1 Gear Review, was uh, kind enough to, to say, you know, take them out, use them, do whatever you do with fixed blade knives. And uh, usually this is all I do with fixed blade knives. Uh, but uh, I have a couple that I use out back, and I am not using these beautiful knives out back. Though I can I can tell just from hefting them that they would work great and they would hold up wonderfully, but they're not mine. And I would rather carry this undercover. You know what I mean? This would be a great fixed blade uh, EDC, I think. Now, I have not carried them like this, but uh, I know they would. They would be. So looking at the design, I like the 50-50 choil, uh, especially on fixed blade knives like this, because you can get a lot of handle and a lot of blade out of it if you're, if the junction between the blade and the handle are shared like this. So you've got 50% uh, of that is handle, 50% of that is blade, kind of like in a spider cone knife. And you can really, you can get a lot full finger grip on a relatively short handle, which I really like on a, on a smaller EDC fixed blade. Another thing I like a lot is this peaked pommel because in reverse grip it 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 gives you the perfect landing point for the thumb it's kind of the perfect thing for your thumb to grip onto if you needed to use this to say jam into the top of a 55 gallon oil drum um, for whatever reason i i always like to think you're a customs guy and uh, you're you're gonna find some uzis in there just like uh just like in dogs of war um Really cool maker's mark on there. Uh, it's like a spade. And uh, he goes by, at uh, on Instagram, he's sad evil or sa devil. I can't, I can't figure out exactly how you're supposed to pronounce that. Uh, sad evil, uh, I, I prefer not to think because his knives are, are, are not sad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he doesn't seem like an evil guy. So I'm going to go with sad devil. I don't know. Here is, uh, but check him out. Definitely sad evil or at S A D E V I L on Instagram. Beautiful, beautiful work. And he's been doing some knives with, um, with Greg Hansen's uh, G Carta that are just so happy. You know, that, that G Carta stuff uh, you should listen to the, to the uh, interview this week, by the way, it's with Greg Hansen of GL Hansen and Sons, uh, unique composites, the, the outfit that makes G Carta. Um, they're so happy. The patterns are so colorful and beautiful that, uh, they really adorn these knives in, in a, in a wonderful fashion. By the way, he also makes incredible Kydex sheaths. I mean, this is some of the best Kydex ever. This is a clip point version of the prime and I know that at some point I'm going to be ordering a prime from, from uh, Richard Steele. I'm just not sure which one. I look at this and uh, I absolutely 
love the clip point version. I may be mistaken, but in doing some sleuthing on his Instagram page, I think that this was maybe the first one in clip point that he made. And I think perhaps it was a, uh, a joint um, design or um, design idea with Justin of tier one, because I think this was the first one he made with this beautiful clip point blade. So you need a little Bowie, you need a little Bowie to stash on your person. This would be the thing. So I'm very, very excited about discovering this guy. Not that I discovered him, he was pointed out to me. And I'm, I'm really happy that uh, tier one showed him to me. And thank you again for loaning me this and the other knives. I have some other knives on loan from tier one. I'm actually going to show you one of them right now. All right, so I'm going to put this one away. Here, I'll, I'll do that in a minute. I don't want to mix up the sheaths. I can't remember which is which. So I'll just place these over here and show you the last of the knives uh, that I'm going to show you today. This is a custom knife by uh, Jake B. Creates, Jacob Ginsberg. Uh, he's at Jake B. Creates on Instagram. And this is a harpoon tanto. And uh, man. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Gorgeous and practical. This is one I could definitely see carrying uh, as, a, as an EDC fixed blade. If you look closely at it, it's a very, very finely ground and finely edged tanto. You've got the harpoon that comes up and terminates in what is a perfect place for your thumb. And it is a chisel ground blade. And you know how I feel about chisel ground blades. I love them, if you don't know how I feel about them. I love them. And uh, they do make a knife extremely sharp because chisels are just extremely sharp. And this one is uh, no exception here. And also the handle is just really nicely done here. I think this is rich light. And this is my first experience with rich light a material that I like a lot. He uses either rich light or G10 pins that basically disappear into the handle. There's his maker's mark. And I love the finish of this blade. This black wash tumbled finish is just beautiful. And then you turn it on its side and look at how perfectly refined and polished it is uh, on the handle here on the dorsal side and on the, wait, dorsal, yeah, right? That's the back. <laughs> and the pectoral side, I don't know, I'm thinking about it like a shark. Uh, just pleasing to the hand, pleasing to the eye, and this would be a great one to carry around. So definitely check out this fella, Jake Ginsberg, at Jake B Creates on Instagram. I believe he's out of San Diego. He looks like a cool young cat, very young dude making these incredible knives. I'm so impressed by all these young people out there, <laughs> all these youngsters, all these young young men and women out there making such beautifully refined knives. And I love seeing a guy, like for instance, Jake B. Creates, he's uh, festooned with tattoos and he might be the kind of guy that um, you would think, you would make assumptions about, oh, this guy's, this guy's rough around the edges. And then you look at his refined, gorgeous work and then you realize, oh, you're just being judgmental because you have preconceived notions. Um, so anyway, I'm going off on a tangent there, but please do check out Jake B. Creates and also check out uh, Sad Evil, uh, Ron Steele Jr. and Jacob Ginsburg making incredible uh, custom fixed blade knives. And then of course, Ian Pekarski, our good friend at CMF Metalworks, just making masterfully masterfully created uh, folders, just beautiful stuff. So thank you one and all uh, to those of you who've loaned me knives, um, not just these, but others. It's so appreciated because it exposes me to things that I never would have a chance uh, to, to hold and to appreciate and uh, maybe to buy at some point and have in my own collection. So it is, it is greatly appreciated. That being said, it does make me nervous. It's like, even when people say, take these out and use them, do whatever you want with them, I don't because um, they're not mine and I don't want to replace them and they're unreplaceable or irreplaceable uh, as their custom knives. That's the whole point of a custom knife. You you can't just replace it. It's not like buying another cheesy tie light 
and I'm only saying cheesy because of my particular one is kind of cheesy. Uh, it is a different, different thing altogether. Okay, I have spoken long enough. And if you've gone this far, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives. And uh, by say when I say see you, I mean literally hop on. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash join and show your face and uh, let your voice be heard. And I'd love to meet you. And then, of course, on Sunday comes another great interview with another great knife person. So, uh, well, that's it. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.